In this video, we'll discuss electric field lines. Electric field lines are a graphical way of representing the electric field. Because electric fields can be quite complicated and the mathematics can be very difficult, then we need some way to get a handle on the thing. We need a picture. People look at things and see things because our primary senses are our eyes. And so if we can get a picture, we can often work difficult math problems, but only if we can figure out how to graphically visualize something. James Clerk Maxwell did much of the work in electromagnetism, and he was a very brilliant mathematical person. However, a lot of the discoveries and the work that led up to what Maxwell synthesized was done by another person, Michael Faraday. Faraday worked for many, many years, tens of years. He had tremendous patience and hard work. He came up with what would become the motor. He developed capacitors. He developed much of our theory of electricity. He was also a great chemist. So Faraday was a tremendous earth, but yet he had almost no education. He had started watching these lectures of science and the Royal Society, and he approached Davies, the great chemist of the society, to let him work for him, and he became his apprentice. And from that, he self-taught himself. But because he had such a bad formal education, he never could really read the mathematics of the published scientist of his days. And yet, he was a genius, and he was able to visualize. And some of the things he left for us can help you. So electric field lines are one of his inventions. He saw them as coming out from charges, these rods, rigid rods, and he could see charges moving up and down and watch the rods vibrate, and this represented a wave to him. We don't think about the rods anymore the way he did, but we do think about the electric field. So the electric field lines are a graphical representation of the electric field, and we have to learn certain properties if they're going to describe correctly what a field does. So first of all the definition of electric field line is a curve such that the electric field vector is tangent to it everywhere. So if you see a field line drawn in a picture say like this, what this tells you is that at any point, say this point right here, there is an electric field vector like that tangent to the curve. Now, I don't know which way, if it's up or down, I'm going to assume it's up like this. But that means that if you put a positive charge here, that's the direction of the force. If you were to come here, tangent to that line at that point, that would be the direction of the force on a positive test charge. If you were to come here, tangent to that line, you would again find that force. If you were here, tangent to that line would be the direction of the electric force. Now for some of you who may be in calculus, I think you probably know some method by which we find slopes of tangents and we try to work on finding tangent lines. So you can see how this can connect over into your calculus work. There are going to be some rules to this system. How many lines? How do you find the strength? Yes, I've told you how to find the direction, but how do I find the length of this electric field vector. Well, here are the rules. First, the lines must always begin on a positive charge or at infinity. And they must end, always end, on a negative charge or infinity. So if you have a positive charge, you can have lines coming out from that positive charge, like this. Let's say that's a Q. And if you have a minus charge somewhere over here, that line can come over and land on that charge. Or this line can go out to infinity. And you can have a line coming in from infinity and attaching to the negative charge. This is a no-no. It cannot just start from nothing. There has to be a cause. When it goes out to infinity, we believe that it's either coming from one of these lines that are wrapping back around, or there are charges out at infinity that's not drawn. But all field lines have to start at a charge. And you can see I've got a slight problem here because this line did not go back in touch. Okay? So that's rule one. Rule number two. 
the number of lines that leave a positive charge or enter a negative charge must be proportional to the magnitude of the charge. So a 3 coulomb charge should have three times as many lines either leaving or entering, depending on whether it's plus or minus, as a 1 coulomb charge has. If it doesn't do that, you don't have your drawing correct. Rule 3, no two lines can cross. You may not have something like this. And here's why. Let's assume I put a positive charge here. This line might say that there's a force that direction. This one says, no, 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 the force is that direction. You can't have two different directions for the same force. We can sum forces, yes, but there is one total force. So this can never happen. Cannot cross. And last, the density of the lines at any place in space is proportional to the strength of the field. This is how we get that 1 over r squared dependence when we go out by the surface area of a sphere. It's density. So it's the number of lines per area. All right, think of it like mass density. Mass creates it, but you spread it in a bigger volume, the density goes down. So if you got charge, but it's spread over a larger area, the strength of the field goes down. All right, let me show you one of these, and then we'll come back and show you how I knew how to draw it. It says, take these following set of charges, draw me an electric field for this thing. Now, here's my problem. I've got to draw these guys, and you know I don't have any specific way to know. I know that there should be positive charges, uh, positive lines coming out of the positive charge, and lines entering the negative charge. I know there should be three times as many lines coming out of this as entering that. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and draw a line straight across, leaving the negative charge and entering. I'm sorry, leaving the positive charge, entering the negative charge. Also. I'm going to draw one more line going out to infinity and another line leaving going out to infinity. That makes one go in, three go out. I've obeyed everything. There are an equal number above the charge as below the charge. There's no reason why the lines would prefer down to up. Now let's say that I took another line and it comes out like that, and of course it'll get bent back to the negative charge. So there's two more lines. But if I added two lines, one top and one bottom, notice how I'm keeping it symmetric, top and bottom, then for those two lines that entered here, six lines had to leave. Now I've taken two, I'm going to need some more. So there's one. There's two. And maybe three, and maybe, say, four. And let's do one more. So let's set this line come in like that. And some line should come in like that. And I need four more lines. So there's a line going out. And another line, and maybe it'll go in like this. A line go out and a line going like this. Now what we see, we have the right ratio of lines. Three times as many lines lead the positive charge as enter the minus Q charge. It looks somewhat like a spherical point charge. It's not perfect. I didn't draw them equally spaced, but it's close. The lines fill up all the space, so if you were to come and say, hey, but I want to know what kind of the electric field is here, you'd have an idea about what it is. It's, it's probably goes something like that, because over here it's going up, and over here it's getting pulled. These lines are going up, all of them going to infinity, but these are trying to be pulled over to this charge. These don't quite make it, and they come out here. If you go over here, you can find out. So there's no like blank space of a large part of the area where you couldn't figure out 
what the force is. It's a graphical way to figure out what the force would be. So that's my finished drawing. Now let me show you what I could do with this drawing. If I was sitting right here, I could tell you that the force on a positive charge is in that direction. If I was over here, I could tell you that the force would be in that direction. If you were over here, I could tell you that the force would be in that direction. In other words, you put a charge anywhere on this paper, and I can roughly tell you what the acceleration is going to be. Also, notice the lines are closer together near the charge. That means there's going to be a bigger force, and it's going to repel. Out here, the forces are more spread apart. The lines are spread apart, I should say, so the force is weaker. Way out here, fewer lines per area, the force is the weakest yet. So the density tells me the strength. The direction of the lines in the diagram tell me the direction of the field. No lines start from nothingness. They either go to infinity or they start on a positive charge. And no charge terminate on nothing. They either end on the negative charge or they go in from infinity. In this case, because there's more positive Q than negative Q, the lines go out to infinity. If there was more negative Q than positive Q, the lines would be coming in from infinity. But I would have drawn it by the same way. It's not perfect, but it gives us a good visualization of what the electric field looks like here. Now what we're going to use this next is to do what's called Gauss's Law. We're going to try to find surfaces where the density of lines is a constant. That is, surfaces where the electric field is constant. And we're going to try to use symmetry as a way to compute electric fields for distributions other than just point charges. I put in the instructions of how I went about what we just saw at the end of your notes. So you can sit there and actually read through this process yourself. All right, I'll see you on another video.